Hello everyone. For midweek tonight, we're going to hear a lesson from Sean Wooten entitled The Heart of a Missionary. I know many of us have heard Sean speak before. We love whenever he preaches the word. This is actually a sermon he gave to the Boston Church of Christ a few weeks ago. So that's why in the beginning uh, he says it's good to be with you this morning, even though we're most of us aren't watching this in the morning. But uh, as many of us know, Sean and Lena lead the Revive Eastern European team. Uh, and Midpoint has a personal connection to this. Carlos and Mackenzie from the Midpoint are a part of that team right now. And so Sean's going to be sharing about some of the amazing things God is doing through that effort, the lives that are being changed, the doors that are being opened up. And so we wanted to share this lesson uh, for a few reasons. First, you know, our special missions contribution is coming up on November 15th. And so it's inspiring to hear uh, the ways God is working and and it inspired me listening to this to go okay how can I give in an even more sacrificial or generous way for our special missions to make sure that the things that Sh Sean shares with us continues to happen that those lives continue to be impacted and changed to the glory of God secondly uh, we wanted to share this lesson because it goes right in line with our go sermon series Sean reminds us of the, as he calls it in this lesson, the capital G good news that we've received that has transformed our lives and that we have the privilege to share with other people. And that's what we've been talking about over the last few Sundays, praying for people that we want to see become disciples, serving others, telling them the good news, sharing our story with them, trying to make disciples. And so this inspires us to go and do all these things we've been talking about for the last month or so. And then finally, we wanted to share this lesson because, like I said, it reminds us of the capital G good news that we have in Christ. And uh, at the time of me recording this right now, uh, millions of people throughout the country are casting their ballot for the next president of the United States of America. And um, by the time you see this, I don't know uh, how much we're going to know about who has won that election or how things are unfolding, but... I think this lesson reminds us of the hope we have in Christ that we find in the gospel. And, and so no matter how you're processing how the election go, ha, ha, has gone or is going, um, I hope this lesson can remind you that we have the best news in the world to hold on to and we have the best news in the world to share with other people. So. Be prepared right now to be inspired, to be moved, uh, uh, to, to, to be challenged, and to be encouraged. Let's hear from Sean as he preaches the heart of a mission. Good morning. It's great to be with you this morning. Uh, my name is Sean. It's a real blessing and honor to be able to share the gospel, the good news um, with you this morning. Uh, the name of the lesson is Heart of a Missionary. Um, hello from Odessa, Ukraine. Um, I'm actually from Kansas, uh, but right now in Odessa uh, is a missionary. Um, basically 30 years ago, um, I was an atheist, but got reached out to, um, was totally blown away by the Bible and God's plan and dream and love for me. Um, so motivated that I left my uh, internship on Wall Street um, and chose to go to the former Soviet Union uh, to be a missionary. Um, now 30 years have passed and I'm still over here. Uh, so it's been an incredible blessing, uh, to be able to be used by God in this part of the world. Um, also to all of you watching this or visiting, um, the members of the church here have been incredible for decades now, supporting in special missions, um, giving their hearts, finances, prayers, uh, to the churches here in Eastern Europe and Europe and really around the world, um, unbelievable. Uh, the conviction and love uh, of all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, thank you for your support. All your brothers and sisters here are sending their love and gratitude um, to you uh, for your devotion and commitment to Christ and his mission. Uh, so let's talk about the heart of a missionary. Um, obviously, the missionary of all missionaries is Jesus, amen. Uh, he also left his hometown uh, left his father um, and came to a distant land where everything was quite foreign um, to him, where he uh, gave his heart, gave his life, uh, shared the good news. It actually costed him his life uh, being a missionary, um, but thanks to him giving his life, 
Uh, me and you now have life. Uh, so he is the ultimate missionary. And when we talk about a lesson about the heart of a missionary, we're just going to talk a little bit about Jesus's heart. Amen. And as disciples, we want to be more and more like Jesus. So we we can learn and grow in our hearts as we focus in on Jesus's heart. Uh, Mark chapter one, uh, verse one, <clears throat> very simple verses this morning. Uh, we're just going to keep it simple. That's much easier for me. Um, the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the son of God. I love the beginning. I don't know about you, but I hate being late to movies because I'm afraid I'm going to miss something. And if you're late, there's no time to get the popcorn. So um, the beginning is very important to me. I, I want to understand what it is that's going on. Uh, we get to be in the beginning. Uh, we get to understand. Thanks to God's word, you can understand everything God wants you to know. You will miss nothing. Um, and this missionary, it's about spreading good news about Jesus. Um, you know, there's some people who have jobs. It's actually to not share good news. Um, they actually share bad news for a living. They get paid to share bad news. Um, luckily for me and you, um, we get to share good news and not just like good news, like our local sport team won or we like the weather. Um, no, I'm talking capital G good news, like all caps, good news. Um, life-changing, eternity-changing, once-in-a-lifetime, virus-curing, um, sin-annihilating, unbelievable good news about Jesus, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior. That's what Messiah basically means, Savior. Jesus came to save you. Jesus loves you. You're stuck in the middle of the ocean, and he's in a rowboat coming by you, and he's Picking you into the, he's the one with the cure. He's the one with the, the, with the, he, he's come to save you. The son of God came to save you. Unbelievable. The, the, the love of God is unbelievable. It's what, mo it, it can change your life if you come in touch with how much God loves you. You know, I was uh, very proud of uh, two of the Christians here. We're in Odessa right now with a mission team. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but it was incredible because Casey and Ryan, two amazing sisters, they were McDonald's before church started. And they decided just to invite every single person sitting in the McDonald's. So they went booth to booth to booth to booth to booth. And they don't speak the local language. They don't speak Russian or Ukrainian. They speak English. So they stop at each booth and they try and figure out if the person sitting there speaks enough English to invite them to come to church. So they're going booth to booth to booth. And they came up to one booth where there was a young woman sitting there. And she's watching them invite everybody in the restaurant. And when it came her turn, she said, sit down. And Casey and Ryan, they sit down and says, so what is it that's so important that you're talking to every single person in this restaurant? Please explain your story. What is it you want from us? And, and they explained the good news, um, the amazing good news that Jesus wants to spend eternity with us. Um, and she's like, hmm, okay, I don't really know the Bible. I'm not sure I believe this, but... I think I would like for you to meet with me regularly and teach me what it is you know. Okay, perfect. Uh, Casey and Ryan were blown. People want to hear the good news. There's got to be a reason why we're, there's got to be, there's got to be something else. What is this good news? Jesus is the good news. Jesus is our savior. He's the son of God. He's come for you. Um, he loves us. Amen. So let's keep reading here. Uh, Mark 1.15, come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. And once they left their nets and followed him, a few quick things here that I think are inspiring. Jesus says, come follow me. You know, it's great that Jesus didn't send us somewhere. He says, come follow me. Uh, so it's okay if you don't know how to do this. It's okay if you feel insecure. You get to be with Jesus in all of this. Now, if Jesus had a dream to save the world, you have to ask yourself, what is his plan? Because he's clearly not here today. At least we, you know, we don't see him. Um, what is the plan to save this planet of seven billion people, Jesus? And here we see the plan. He's come follow me. I'll show you how to do it. And then I'll send you out to go do it. We actually get to play the lead role in this incredible adventure slash drama slash love story. Like the, the greatest adventure ever. Me and you play the key role of actually helping people to know about God's love. So we follow the missionary. The missionary is leading us. We follow him and we try to be like him as much as we possibly can. Um, 
Fishers of souls, go fish for people. Uh, this is God's plan. You know, I don't, I have to confess, I love Avenger movies. I'm sorry. Um, I know some of you are thinking, how old are you? But no, I love the Avenger films. Why? Because these guys have like these gifts, right? They have these abilities. Um, and it's awesome because they use them for good. Of course, there's the villains who use their gifts for bad. But but I love the Avengers because they, they work together and they have these incredible gifts and they use them to bless other people. They use them to save people. They use them to encourage and strengthen people, right? So in my mind, disciples are a lot like the Avengers because the disciple also has lots of gifts, supernatural gifts. We have a direct connection to the creator of the universe. Um, we have the gift of the church, the body of Christ. It's actually here on this planet right now. Uh, we live in the kingdom of heaven. Our, our, our citizenship actually is not a, according to your passport, whatever that may be. Your citizenship is in heaven. Um, we're one people. Uh, it's incredible. We have the Bible. It's living and active. It, it, it never grows old. Um, we have so much. We have the mind of Christ. We have the love of God. So many gifts. We have these incredible powers that God's given us. And we can go out and do good. And we can save lives. And we can save souls. And we can, we can change the world. Uh, we get to be uh, a superhero. We get to do something amazing for God. God chose us to be that for him. I'm encouraged and inspired by that. I think that's why uh, right in the very, very beginning of Mark, when Jesus said, come follow me, he didn't say, come follow me. I'll teach you how to pray or how to be holy or how to, he actually started with, I'm going to give you the reason you're alive. There's a reason you're alive. And you knew it was more than just being a dentist or a banker or whatever, although those are wonderful professions. Your life has more meaning and purpose than something that stays on earth. Your life and your purpose is connected to eternity. Um, you know, I love this photo. I think it's hilarious. Uh, Jesus sitting on a branch talking to other superheroes. And this is how I save the world. See, Jesus has done it. He is the Savior. He is the Son of God. Um, you know, I, I, I also like here at the end, it says they left their nets and followed him immediately. That's pretty radical. Um, when you leave your job, your security, uh, how you're feeding your family, um, your hometown, your home, what you're used to, when you leave all that behind on the drop, to just go and follow the ultimate missionary. Um, that's commendable. Um, I'm actually, I want to lift you up, lift up a team here. Check out this team. Uh, we had a dream many uh, months ago, almost a year and several months ago, a dream to pull together a team, but, but who would sign up for a team that goes to Eastern Europe? You know, people like, you know, Paris, Rome, places like that sound very attractive, London, but Albania, uh, Romania, uh, sometimes people get a little eerie thanks to Hollywood. Usually it's our part of the world that's blowing up the world or kidnap somebody's kid, uh, but it's just not true. Uh, Eastern Europe is awesome. I love having spent the majority of my life in Eastern Europe. But anyways, as we thought about, can we get a team of 20 people to come to Eastern Europe? Eh, I don't know. People want to. And then we thought, okay, let's believe we can get a team of 20 people to come to Eastern Europe. Um, how do we get them here? Where do we, where do we find the funding for that? Is there, where would we get the money to bring 20 people for a year to Eastern Europe? Well, I don't think we can find the money for that. And so it's, so, well, what if, what if everyone raised their own money? Okay. So we're going to find 20 people who are going to go to Eastern Europe and they're going to pay for themselves, uh, to come to Eastern Europe. Uh, and not for like a, just a three week youth corps or, or vacation or, or, or so we're talking a year. Okay, maybe we can find those people who are willing to pay for themselves to come to. Okay, but wait a minute. When they when they come home from a year later, where would they? They'll have lost their jobs. Uh, they won't have a job. They they maybe have just spent their savings uh, supporting themselves for a year over. Okay, who who would do that? Um, do you think we can find those people? Let's give it a shot. <clears throat> We send it out, the, the message around the world, or at least across the states, or at least around our fellowship uh, in the European Mission Society, said, who would be willing to sign up and give a year of their life to change the eternal destiny of a nation? Um, and you know what? The Lord put it on the hearts of 20 people, um, six empty nesters, God bless them, um, six campus interns, and... 10 uh, one-year challenges, people who are in their careers, in grad school, doing different things, said, you know what, I'll take a year break and I'll go. 
Um, I'll go preach the word. So we got this team together. We're totally fired up. It's the end of February. We finally got the team, 20 people fired up. Let's go. This is going to be awesome. And then COVID hits. And right when we're about to start raising money, raising funds, God bless Glenn Petruzzi, our dear brother who coached us and fired us up and got us excited about raising money um, during a COVID pandemic where the majority of the people reaching out to didn't even know if they were going to have a job. And God bless all of you who supported one of these Globe changers or Caleb's or missionaries, uh, you gave some money so that they could they could raise the money and come. And you know what? The team within two and a half months, we had raised basically enough money to bring that team, uh, the, the people who are self-supporting, bring them over here uh, to Eastern Europe. God bless them. Now, we wanted to be very careful during COVID. So we said, unless all the lights are green for two months, we don't quit our jobs. We don't leave our careers. We stay put. We're not going anywhere until the Lord shows us two months of green lights and it's safe to travel. God blessed. He heard our prayers. June 15th to August 15th, green lights, all good. No closed borders, no closed doors. Everything's awesome. The two months passed and we said, okay, let's do it. Everyone quit their jobs, gave up their leases, uh, let everything go. Eight days after that, the border shuts to Hungary. Um, I go back to the team, guys. We, Let's do it. Where, where do we go then? Where do we land? So, okay, so we put our heads together. Uh, 48 hours, we decided to, okay, let's go to Odessa. We'll go to Odessa, then we'll go to Budapest. And we rerouted the entire group, ready to go to Odessa. 24 hours after that, Odessa, Ukraine shuts its border. Okay, now where do we go? Now in Eastern Europe, there was one country that was still open that was actually green. So you don't have to, you don't have to quarantine if you go there, and that's Istanbul. So here we have the team. Landed in Istanbul. Since it's green, we didn't have to quarantine. Uh, we immediately took COVID tests just to make sure we were all safe. And then we lived together for two weeks. Unbelievable spiritual family bonding, best friends experience. Unbelievable. And uh, even though the city is 99.6% Muslim, uh, the team still was a magnet that brought out like 22 visitors to church and Bible talk. Uh, eight people wanted to study the Bible after we'd just been there for two and a half weeks. Uh, God blessed. And since then, we went from Istanbul to Odessa because the Ukraine border opened. Thank you, Lord. Um, and since we landed in Odessa from Istanbul, we came from a green country, which basically means we didn't have to quarantine in Odessa. Uh, if we would have came directly from America, we would have had to sit in quarantine separate from each other for two weeks in Odessa. The Lord knew better than us. Uh, so he took us through Istanbul so our quarantine time could be together, building families, studying the Bible, praying, helping people there to become Christians, encouraging the church in Istanbul And when that quarantine time was up, we landed in Odessa out of quarantine, uh, COVID-free, praise God, um, ready to serve the Odessa church here. Uh, So God always has a plan better than ours. As much as we painstakingly try to cross off everything that we possibly can uh, to have the most efficient and safe plan we can, the Lord still determines our steps. Um, And right now we're in Odessa waiting for the doors to open in Budapest, Hungary. Uh, God willing, that'll happen soon. But as of me recording it at this exact moment, that door is not open yet. So continue to pray for us. But I am very proud of the team uh, for their devotion, uh, for their just faith to step out in the middle of a global pandemic, leave their jobs, uh, leave their careers with basically no guarantee of where in the world we're going to end up. But I'm telling you, everywhere we go, sharing the gospel, it was so encouraging after just pulling together a last minute Sunday service here in Odessa, um, 72 people uh, were at church on Sunday from our uh, little revive effort with the, with the six member campus ministry here. Unbelievable how God is working. Um, and, and one other encouraging story, Carlos, a brother from Chicago, um, he's a wrestler and uh, he reached out to the wrestling people in Odessa before we came um, and met with them as soon as he landed um, and it turns out, uh, I then went and met with him the next day, uh, just to translate. And, um, <clears throat> this guy was sharing that he'd been praying for four years for God to send a missionary from America who was a Christian, who was a wrestler who could help convert people to Christianity in Odessa. And he started to tear up and said, Carlos, you are the answer to my prayer. Um, the next day he brought his basketball trainer buddy with him, who's training the different teams here in Odessa in basketball. And he's like, I would love to learn how to share my, I would love to learn how to witness about God. I just don't know how to do it. Could you help me convert my basketball, the teams I train? Yeah, we'd be totally fired up to do that. 
God is opening doors. It's unbelievable um, just to be missionaries, um, just to be able to share the good news. Uh, the last thing I wanted to share here, um, let's keep reading in Mark. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees. If you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. This is a great way just for us to finish our time uh, in the gospel this morning. Jesus is the son of God. He's the missionary. He has the heart of a missionary. He left everything and sacrificed everything so that we could be saved. We just want to be missionaries like him. Being a missionary has nothing to do with your geography. It has everything to, to do with having a heart like Christ. He's appointed us to be the fishers of souls. Uh, the brothers then left immediately. Uh, we have the same opportunity. Let's respond today to be missionaries for Christ. But this is just really shows the heart of Christ. This man with leprosy, and I don't know if you know a lot about leprosy, but basically this, you wake up in the morning and you, and you see you have leprosy and immediately you have to leave your home. You say goodbye to your family. You say goodbye to your friends. You're, you're fired from your job. Uh, you're kicked out of your university. Um, you have no future. You have no career. You're abandoned outside of the city. You can now no longer come to the temple where you worshiped God. You lost everything. You have nothing left. This leper runs to Jesus, falls on his knees, and says, you could make me clean. You could give me back a life. You could, you could restore me to my family. You could, you could restore me to the, you could allow me to go back to the, I could be right with, I could, I could have my life back. Jesus, if you're willing, I could have my life back. And Jesus is like, if I'm here for this and he healed this leper, unbelievable. I am this leper. I would have lost my family. I, I didn't have deep relationships. I was immoral. I was a liar. I, I was drunk. I would. Have, I was on a path of self-destruction and loneliness. And Jesus touched me. Jesus healed me. He gave me a reason for life. He gave me back my life. He gave me back a life I never even knew was possible, which just makes it so much easier to then pick up this life throw it into two suitcases and go wherever I need to go to share the gospel. This is why you year after year sacrifice, decade after decade, you sacrifice for special missions. You give when you don't even know if you're going to have money tomorrow. It's unbelievable, your sacrificial hearts. And it's because Jesus has touched you. You know, if you, if you flip back in the Old Testament and take a look at what those sacrifices were, basically you're supposed to bring two birds uh, to the priest, and one of them you're supposed to like rip open and pour out his blood in a bowl. And then you're supposed to take the live bird and dip it in the blood and then set it free. So basically it's illustrating that there's two birds, one has to die, and the other one will be set free because of the blood of the other one. This this is me and you. This is what Jesus did for us. There's There's me and there's Jesus. And Jesus allowed himself to be torn open and his blood was poured out. And then me and you were baptized and then we were set free. We could only be set free because he gave up his life. This is incredible. This, this cleansing of this lost life to leprosy, the sacrifice necessary illustrated what Jesus was going to have to pay to restore me from my leprous life to being able to be free and be healed and be clean. Brothers and sisters, we've been blessed incredibly by the love of God. Me and you have been set free. Me and you are cleansed. Me and you are missionaries. Me and you, we have, we have a purpose. Uh, we have an eternal impact purpose, whether it's praying for one another, whether it's sacrificing financially, whether it's packing your bags and moving somewhere, we're all in the same family fighting the same fight 
so that as many people as possible can be saved. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for being at this service. If you stumbled across this uh, record, recording or watching this on Facebook or wherever, and you want to know more about the gospel, the good news, this was just the beginning. You absolutely have to check out the rest of the story. And just so you know, you've actually been chosen to play a role in God's story. Don't miss your opportunity to know about God's love. Don't miss your opportunity to be saved. Uh, don't miss your opportunity to know the Son of God. It'll absolutely change your life. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your heart. And uh, continue to pray for us over here as we preach the preach the word and reach out to as many as possible. We love you and uh, see you soon.